Good morning and welcome to Paul T's World. In this video we'll be looking at the roses. I have climbing roses and rambling roses. I have a rambling rose on the patio and a climbing rose, two climbing roses near the front door, a rambling rose down by the gate and a climbing rose up the house on the other corner. So let's have a look at the roses. This is rambling rector, beautiful rose smells absolutely gorgeous. It's a very vigorous rose and in fact uh, any professional would probably say don't put it in a pot. So what did I do? I put it in a plastic pot. I think it looks okay the plastic pot. Some people don't uh, realize it's plastic so I've got away with it. I replace the compost each year when I say replace it, only, only a few inches down to here and put manure in. Water it regularly because obviously a vigorous rambler in a pot wants lots of water and lots of goodness. I've seen this rose of rambling rector going right across a large house, so vigorous that it then carries on next door. It's quite thorny. So you have to be a bit careful when it's on a patio. And on the other side of the pergola is an Albertine. I have it in the same pot. chicken wire to stop the blackbirds from turfing it all out onto the patio. Again this smells nice, quite thorny. Lovely rose. There's something about rambling and climbing roses going over a pergola or over the front door. So let's walk round to the front of the house and see the climbing rose that is uh, also in a pot. Not a particular vigorous rose, this one. This is Paul's Scarlet. A friend of mine bought it for me many years ago and I decided to put it in a pot. Largest pot I could find and it works okay in a pot. It's an interesting climbing rose, this one, because it doesn't repeat flower. It puts out all its blooms and they kind of sit there for weeks on end like that. I almost feel it looks good from a distance, but when you get up close, maybe they're not quite as attractive as some of the other climbing roses I've got. Interesting thing here is this will be the rootstock 
and so these have grown from the base and so I will cut those all off. It doesn't scent this Paul Scarlet. Now I water and feed it a lot and yet the leaves just seem a little bit droopy for some reason. I'm not altogether sure why. But it looks great from a distance. This pot is plastic. So it's quite cheap. I think it looks quite nice, especially from a distance. I've raised the pot off the ground just so the drainage is better, just with some of the stones from the path. And when I water it, I literally fill this with water until it all drains through. So that's the Paul Scarlet. Let's make our way round the front of the house and have a look at the two other climbing roses I've got. Oh, the fuchsia is still looking nice. And here we have the Dancing Queen. It's a hybrid tea rose, which may be why it doesn't actually climb quite as obviously as some of the other climbers. It scents beautifully, the fragrance is gorgeous. It flowers all summer. You get lots of petals on the ground. <laughs> These were all cleaned up yesterday. And so there's quite a turnover of flowers. Nice rose. When I had this path done, I asked the builders to leave two gaps for the two roses. So each year, I take out as much of the soil as possible and then replace it with manure, good compost. And they respond very well. This is the golden showers. Now we had a little bit of a disaster two weeks ago on this. We had winds for 48 hours solid. The winds were up to 50 miles an hour. I know that isn't that much for some people around the world who have some really strong gusts, but it blew the golden showers. If you remember from the other video, they were right up here and it really blew them about and I had to cut most of them off. But they're growing, growing again quite quickly. Again, this rose scent, the fragrance is gorgeous. I've put these screws in sort of about what a foot and a half apart a roll plug in there, a big screw, and then some fairly uh, heavy duty wire. Could be tighter actually. And so what have I done? I've got one here, one here, and one here. And of course I could put another one in further up. It's probably best not to tuck them behind the wires, even though I have done here to stop it blowing around. Because when you rearrange the climbing rows in the winter, you want to be able to pull them off, cut down the ones you want, bend over some of them so they're better in front of the wires 
And then you can just use, I've just got some uh, bits of string here that uh, from another year. I then just tie them with a little bit of string where necessary. This one, for example, I could just tie there as it grows up a little bit more with some string. I'll show this one again in a few weeks when it's uh, blooming nicely. Really nice to have fragrant roses by the front door. And here we are down at the front gate and this is the rambling rose Alexander Gerald. light fragrance. Not very thorny. The golden showers was very thorny. It's growing through the hawthorn. Rambling roses flower on the previous year's growth. So it's a good idea if you want to trim them back to do it just after flowering. Just growing through the lilac. It's really nice to have plants growing through other larger shrubs. I hope you've enjoyed my video today on the roses around my house. If you have, perhaps you might like to subscribe, hit the notification button so you don't miss any of the videos, and I hope to see you next time on Paul T's World. Bye.